Welcome to Three Skulls Tavern, a channel devoted to tabletop role-playing games by Free League Publishing. This show is sponsored by Worldmill, online server hosting for the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. To support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt K. For a minimum of $2 per month, you get access to a ton of extra content. Welcome back to the Ravenlands. We join Udo and Yubi as they are fully rested and recovered outside of their, or inside of their temporary lodgings. This old farmhouse from a rich merchant, or a rich farmer, something like that. But still ruins, nevertheless. So there's nothing recoverable here. We both rested. It is now midnight. And... We left it at the last session, if you remember, that something, something is coming, something is approaching the camp. And to figure out what this is, I'm going to be using two oracle tables. These oracle tables are based on Iron Sworn, and one is going to, in fact, I'll show you here on the screen. So here I have two oracles. I have one called, as you can see, Action, so we're going to roll that one, click. We're going to look at it in a second, and the second one, whoops is going to be theme, action and theme. We're going to roll those two. We're going to look at what they say. And they say, Assault Vow. Wow. <laughs> Assault Vow. The only vow I can think of is to do with Yubi. Yubi is very quiet. Yubi has not been talking very much. And we're going to say that she's not quite taking a vow of silence, but it's something along those lines. She's, yeah, it's, she, for some reason she's made this decision not to, not to talk. But there's an assault happening. We're being attacked. And that is breaking her vow of silence. So she's going to actually start talking now. It's tenuous, but that's what's going to happen. And to figure out what kind of attack is, is happening, what kind of assault is happening, I'm going to roll on another table here, another oracle table, the third one called General Encounter. Generic Encounter, sorry. <laughs> Marauders with Prisoners. Oh my god. All right. So I'm going to roll here um, a d6. I'm going to see what kind, of, um, what kind of Marauders we have. Five. Human. All right. So. Voices are heard in the forest. It's midnight. This way. I can smell something. You smell that? There's some meat. Shh, quiet, quiet. Yubi turns to me. Gestures. Outside of the camp to leave to leave the shelter we've just slept in and to go hide out in the woods a little ways away. We're also going to say that she's managed to recover some of her arrows. We did say that she they had fallen out and she wanted to recover them. Um, I forgot about that. So I'm just going to very, very quickly, I'm going to see if the GM screen is working here. I'm going to go to her gear. She had lost all of her arrows. It's not, it's not allowing me to do anything, so we're going to close that. And we're going to say that she manages to get back, because the wolf trampled on some and she trampled on some, she's only back to d6 arrows, so her arrows are quite low. <clears throat> Let me just think about that for a second. She had d10 arrows. I don't want to make this too punishing on myself, right? She had d10 arrows, they fell out, and she wanted to recover them back again. So we're going to say that some got broken, so it's just going to decrease an automatic dice step. Or in fact, what I could say is because they're all just on the ground, she had two, um, two full shifts to recover them, maybe even three full shifts to recover them, um, that will roll the resource dice twice for arrows to see if any of them, to see if it reduces. I think that's maybe a little bit of a fair way to do it. So I'm going to put the arrows back to d10. We're going to roll it once. We got a seven. It was almost a one. So nothing got reduced, and we're going to roll it a second time. I'm going to 9, so we're going to keep it at d10, actually. She managed to get them all back. Okay. 
we go rushing outside. And I think we're going to just leave it like without making any rolls for this. We're going to keep it narrative as some humans come bundling in. We're going to roll a d6 to see how many um, humans are there. We're going to roll one base die and we're going to roll one skill die. The base die, the white die, is how many um, uh, how many human? Well, we'll see. The, the higher number is going to be the number of marauders. The lower number is going to be the number of prisoners, I think. Six and six. Interesting. Very interesting. So six humans come in, and they've got six, six prisoners trussed up. Now, there's no way in hell that UB and I are going to try and fight six humans. Um, maybe after they've slept and they've got some guards up, maybe we can try and do something. Um, and we're basically just kind of hiding off in the woods, watching them. And in fact, they're not stupid. They find this place, they're armed, they're ready, they've got their bows and everything, but they're humans, they can't see in the dark. Yubi can see in the dark, she has, um, she's nocturnal, right? So she's kind of taking me back far enough where she can keep an eye on things. I can't see shit, um, but she's keeping an eye, a close eye on how things are progressing. Um, the humans spend a fair amount of time looking around, trying to find whoever had made camp here because our fire's still burning. Um, I'm going to say we kind of managed to pack up because we both slept all the rest of it. We're thinking we're probably packed everything up. We're trying to think like maybe we should set off and get an early start in the middle of the night with UB's nocturnal vision. Then she can lead the way and there won't be any penalties for it being dark. Um, so we are kind of packed and ready to go. And now the real question is, I kind of whisper in Yubi's ear, I don't know if we should leave those people to their fate. We could probably attack. You've got your arrows, right? We could probably attack them in their sleep and kill them and free those prisoners. That would be a tale worthy of, of setting out in the first place for, for going on an adventure. What do you think? Yubi looks at me long and hard and says, no, I'm taken aback. I've not heard Yubi speak ever in my entire life. So the weight of her saying no is more than just, it's more than just a response. It's, it's massive. And I am going to I'm going to just find myself nodding like, yeah, 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 okay, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. We nearly had our arses handed back to us by a wolf, a single wolf. Six armed marauders with prisoners is probably not going to go down well, even if we manage to drop one or two of them. So, yeah, we're going to keep moving. In fact, we're going to head due north. We're already in this hex, so we can move one, f um, in fact, in one single, um, in one single... Uh, shift, I think they're called. Uh, one one single like uh, quarter of the day, we can move uh, through two of the normal forest hexes. Now Yubi is going to be leading us in both of these because it's nighttime, so she needs to be she needs to be doing the eh, she needs to be leading the way. So unfortunately for us, she's not very good at this because it's a survival role. And in fact, I'm just wondering uh, whether it might be better for me to lead the role, even though it's dark. It probably isn't. It doesn't make any sense. So we're going to do survival from her. No successes. That means we roll for a mishap. So going into this next hex, there's going to be a mishap here. In fact, I'm going to use the correct... And what's the mishap going to be? Fog. Fog is rolling through. We're caught unawares by a thick fog. The distance we cover this day is decreased by one hex. Okay. The distance in this quarter day is decreased. So we can only, it takes us a whole entire quarter day to travel through this one hex. In difficult terrain, which this is not, you're stuck in the hex that you started. In addition, each adventurer suffers one point of damage to empathy from the gloomy mist. Okay. So, we move up here. It is now dawn. Dawn approaches, spend an entire an entire six hours trying to get out of this gloomy mist. But we've we've done it. 
All right, we both take one damage to our empathy. And it's this is where this kind of it says clear sky today, but we're we're currently we're currently in a mist. Maybe the mist f clears as we enter this hex, as we've gone into this hex. Uh, but dawn is dawn is uh, basically um, dawning. We don't have any of the deer left that we had, although one thing I did want to do, I forgot to do, was to add the pelts to our inventory. So, looking at our character sheets, we had quite a few pelts to take with us. We had um, four pelts, three from the deer, one from the wolf. And looking at our how much kind of encumbrance we can take, there's not a lot. Um, I can take three additional things, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take two of these pelts. In fact, I'll just delete that because I can do one quantity on this. I'm gonna take um, oh I'm gonna take three pelts with me, which puts me over my encumbrance. And UB is going to take. In fact, we'll just have one of us taking it, and it's gonna be. Is it gonna be me? It's gonna be UB. It's gonna be me, I think. I'm overloading my backpack with pelts. And maybe we're gonna share the burden. Maybe I'll take it for some some of the time, and then you be can take it for some of the other time. But for now, I can carry up to sixteen. I can carry up to double my um, double my encumbrance threshold in in weight, so I can go up to sixteen. Uh, but there are penalties that'll come into play because I'm currently over encumbered. So, when I'm over encumbered, which is pretty much as soon as we got started, um, I have to make an endurance roll to be able to to hike. So, I'm actually going to make that retrospectively for when we entered into this hex. So, I got Cody here to endurance, I've got four in strength, and I make a roll. I got a six, so that's fine. I've managed to, you know, overburdened as I am, push my way here into this hex. We're now going to, the dawn has broken, we're going to push another hex up, and I think we're going to go north, um, and kind of, kind of go here onto the side of this, um, the side of this lake. But we're not on the lake, so this is where there are random encounters that can happen on a lake. But we're kind of next to the lake, and I'm going to say, I'm going to roll on the forest table because we're still kind of, I imagine the forest goes up to the edge of this lake, but we're still traveling along through the forest. So the first thing to do, again, is for me to roll on Udo's survival, as I'm now leading the way. Two successes, that's good, so there's no mishap there. And then the second thing is um, to ask the oracle if there are, four, oh, actually first... <laughs> Before I do the oracle, I'm going to roll for Udo to see if, um, again, if my endurance is allowing me to, to kind of carry this burden. I got a six, so I can. That's fine. I'm still I'm still trudging along. Now we need to ask the oracle if we're if we encounter anything in this new hex. So oracle, do we encounter anything in this new hex? A six and a one, again, is a complication. And a complication for this oracle means that this is an adventure site. Oh boy. <laughs> um, to figure out what kind of adventure site this is, I actually haven't thought of this completely. Is this going to be a village? Is it going to be a castle? Or is it going to be a dungeon? Those are the three types. And judging by where we are, I think for when you're playing solo, you have to put, kind of sometimes put your GM hat on, and sometimes you have to go with what feels to be the most um, obvious choice. So what I'm going to do here is uh, it would be really good for us to come across a village because we can actually trade for some pelts maybe for something. Um, it could be, hopefully, it will be a village which is um, willing to trade with us and not have some sort of um, crazy problems that we have to try and solve. So I think uh, rather than asking the oracle, I'm going to roll a single d6. And because we don't want a dungeon, a roll of a one on the dungeon, a roll of one is going to be that it's a dungeon. A roll of a two or a three is going to be a castle. 
or a four, five, and six is going to be a village because I think it makes a lot of sense for a village to be here next to a lake, but a castle could make sense too. In a dungeon, um, maybe, maybe not. So we'll see what happens. So four or higher, it's a village. One, it's a dungeon, and any and two or three, it's going to be a castle. It's a castle. <laughs> So here's where we open Wormtails. Wormtails is a website which um, I've actually been able to get into Foundry. I'm not going to be able to share how I've done this, unfortunately. Um, it was quite an effort to get it in. So normally you could just open a new tab and go to Wormtails. The link is in the actual um, show description to find um, a link to Wormtails. But all I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Generate. I click on Generate Castle. And I've got all these different sizes here. I'm going to leave them all ticked. I don't know what kind of castle this is going to be, but it's going to basically roll randomly off for one of them. Click the button, and here we go. Deep Mark. This palace, so it's the ruins of a palace, was built around 270 years ago. I wouldn't know that. During the Blood Mist, the construction was initiated by a noble who was known for her vanity. Its original purpose was to be used in war. Unfortunately, Deepmark was later the site of a tragic incident. Nowadays, the palace is in ruins. An interesting oddity about Deepmark is the fungal fields surrounding the place. <laughs> the place is inhabited by 17 dwarves. Dwarves, interesting. We're, you know, um, I've hit the save button, I think. Yep, so it's saved up here now. I'm gonna get rid of light fell. Deepmark is now saved as a castle. I can reference it if I need to. Um, and just before I forget, I'm also going to open a journal entry under castles. I'm going to create a journal entry called Deepmark. And we're going to save it just before I forget. I'm going to save it here under castles. Okay, and I'll fill that in later um, in between sessions. <laughs> Just in case it um, this gets reset. Okay, but the, the kind of salient, salient things to think about here is that this is a palace, an old ancient palace, which is now kind of in ruins, I guess, mainly. Um, the ruins of a palace surrounded by fungal fields. There are mushrooms growing all around. This is going to make foraging, I think, completely easy. But I'm probably going to say because of all the, the mushrooms, we'll ask the oracle if they're if they're edible. Um, but if we need to forage, we can have lots of mushrooms, I think, without really needing to spend much effort on that. Like, maybe not even need to roll for survival. But the 17 dwarves. And to see how the 17 dwarves are, I think the first thing to do is... Um, I rolled a complication, which was an adventure site. This is an adventure site. The next thing to do is to roll scouting by UB to see if um, we see the dwarves before they see us. Bearing in mind, it's like 6 a.m. right now. Um, it's actually probably like getting into this hex. We're kind of going halfway into this hex. So we're going to roll UB's scouting to see if she manages to spot them. So scouting. Straight up scouting roll, no extras. And she does not succeed. We're not going to have her roll again. So, we kind of stumble onto this palace, I guess as we're kind of coming out of the forest onto the lake. First we see the mushrooms, and then all of a sudden, there's a shout. Hey, you! Stop where you are! And there is a dwarf pointing a crossbow, we'll say at us. Who are you? Put our hands up instantly. Uh, my name is Udo Pebbletoes. Please, we're just traveling through. Uh, would you like to trade, perhaps? Trade? <laughs> traveling through? Hmm. Who's with you? It's just me and my companion here. I kind of lo slowly lower my hands. Do you want to trade? Wait right there. And then he turns and shouts something in dwarfish um, back into the into the um, into the uh, the palace. And this is where I'm going to roll on another table, another oracle. 
I've got one here for NPCs. And it's actually settlement attitude I wanted to roll on. This is kind of a settlement. We're going to see what their attitude is like. We're going to hit roll. And we're going to see just what they think of me. Neutral. Good. There are some really nasty results in that table. So neutral is a good one. Um... Their kind of attitudes or toward us is neutral. They're not hostile. They're not friendly. Friendly would have been good, but they're neutral. That's fine. Um, and these dwarves, basically, a couple of them pop out. A, a few more of them, right? I don't know that there's 17, of course, but there are a good number. We'll say five or six. Suddenly pop out, and we're kind of surrounded by these dwarves. Yubi looks a little bit kind of worried, a little bit apprehensive. But I, I basically give them my best smile. And I try and charm them. Look, look, look. There's no... I'm, I'm just a halfling. This is Yubi. She's my friend. She's a goblin. She she can't talk, unfortunately. But really, we're just trying to pass through. We don't want to We don't want to bother you. If you want to do some trading, happy to do some trading. Let's see how well I do the manipulate roll here. I know they're neutral, so I'm going to actually give myself a little bit of a bonus. Because they're not... Uh, they're not... Well, I'm going to give myself a bonus. That's kind of cheating a little bit. Not cheating, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, my empathy has been damaged. Um, manipulation is at one. So we'll just... I mean, I'm not doing a lot here. But we'll see what I can do. No. And manip manipulation is actually um, a an opposed roll against insight, but I don't even need to bother rolling for insight because if the insight roll is to cancel successes potentially, but I need to get at least one success to successfully manipulate them. And according to the rules, if you try to manipulate somebody and you fail, one of the things is that they attack you. I failed my manip manipulation roll. They're not going to attack me, but they're going to do something a little bit it's not worse. Something as bad. And they're going to take us prisoner. So Yubi and I are taken prisoner inside of this palace. They take all of our gear off of us. They steal basically everything. And Yubi and I are left with nothing in this place. This fungal fortress. And that's where we're going to end this session. We're going to end it with us being taken prisoner. And the time, we'll say, is you know, mid-morning. I'm just going to advance the clock here for the next session. We're going to just put it at noon, right? As all of our possessions are taken away with us and we are effectively prisoners now in a dwarf fortress. Thanks for watching. If you can um, hit the subscribe button, that helps us to grow the show. Hit the like button as well if you like this episode. And if you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. If you want to reach out on social media, all the links are in the description. And that's it. See you next week to see how things progress.